okay let's check out this trig sub integral and I know it's going to be a trig substitution because I see this messy thing inside of a square root that I sure would like to express as the square of a single thing and this fits the form of a trig identity so I'm always choosing just between these two trig identities some manipulation of that one or some manipulation of this one And in this integral, my problem here is a variable thing squared minus 1, which I could get out of that second identity by subtracting 1. All right, so it looks like we're going to let x be equal to secant of theta to clean up that part. So let x equal secant theta. That means that x squared minus 1 is secant squared theta minus 1, and I can replace it with tangent squared. Um, I also have to deal with my limits of integration. I would prefer to just go off and do a theta integral and plug in values of theta and never look at x again. So when x is equal to 1, that means I need the angle that makes this true. 1 is equal to secant theta. And secant is... 1 over the cosine, and for that to be 1, the cosine would have to be 1, and that happens at theta equals 0. All right, x equals 2. That means I need the secant to be 2. That's the same as saying the cosine is 1 half. And so what angle has a cosine of positive one-half, that's pi over three. So these, those came out to be nice special angles. And I need to find the transformation of dx. I think I'll go ahead and do that up here, right next to x. So dx is secant theta tangent theta d theta. All right, so I'll make all these substitutions and transform my integral going to be the integral as theta goes from 0 to pi over 3. And then I have the square root of x squared minus 1, so secant squared theta minus 1. That's going to turn into a tangent squared. And then I have my dx, which is secant theta tangent theta d theta. And it's all divided by x squared, which is going to be secant squared theta. All right, so it's the integral from 0 to pi over 3. And the secant squared theta minus 1 piece, that turns into tangent squared theta, but it's square rooted. So I have a tangent coming out of this piece. And I'll combine it with this one here to give me a total of tangent squared. And I'm going to go ahead and cancel one factor of secant while I'm at it. All right, and then I'm kind of wondering what to do with this thing. And um, one thing you might think of is to break it down into sines and cosines and see what happens. Um, another thing you should always be looking at is what would happen if I applied a Pythagorean identity to a squared thing, and does it get me anywhere? And in this case, I could replace the tangent squared with secant squared minus 1, which, if I then divide by secant, I think gives me two terms that have easy antiderivatives. So that's the way I'm going to go. All right, so that's secant squared theta minus 1 over secant theta d theta. Right, we're kind of trying to look ahead, a couple steps ahead always. Um, even if you can't tell precisely what's going to happen, you can tell if it's promising. All right, so I get secant theta out of that first term, and then I have a 1 over secant. That's 1 over 1 over cosine, which is just cosine. Um, so this looks really good. So I have, out of the first term, a natural log, absolute value, secant theta plus tangent theta. minus 
integral of the second term sine theta. And this is all evaluated from 0 to pi over 3. So let's plug in the pi over 3. Natural log absolute value secant pi over 3. I'll just hang on a second on evaluating these special angles. Plus tangent pi over 3 minus sine pi over 3 minus what I get when I plug in 0. So it's going to be natural log absolute value secant of 0 plus tangent of 0 minus sine of 0. Okay, and the, a lot of this stuff is zero over here. The tangent of zero is zero. Sine of zero is zero. And, well, the secant of zero, that's one over the cosine of zero, that's one. And the natural log of one is zero, so the whole thing is gone. And if I evaluate um, the upper limit here, I have the secant of pi over three. That's one over the cosine of pi over three. But the cosine of pi over 3 is a half. So 1 over a half, that gives me 2. And then I have the tangent of pi over 3, which would be the sine of pi over 3 over the cosine of pi over 3. So that gives me a root 3. And then minus the sine of pi over 3, which is root 3 over 2. So it cleans up to natural log of the absolute value uh, we don't need the absolute value anymore because we know we're looking at positive numbers. So the natural log of 2 plus root 3 minus root 3 over 2.